let's close more deals. Not only that, let's close bigger deals. All right. I'm going to step you through a complete process today. And then I want you to put in the comments section, whether you're watching this live or afterwards, uh, any questions that you have about this process. Because after this show, after watching this, after participating in this, if you're watching this live, which I hope you are, uh, you should feel absolutely confident and bulletproof to go on appointments with property owners and either disqualify them quickly or qualify them and really understand if the service you provide, if giving them an offer that makes sense to you also makes sense to them. It's going to pull out all of these things. Listen to this. All right. I'm going to open with this because I think it's really important. Self-starters know there's never a right time to get started, regardless of how they feel at any given moment. How they feel in the next moment is determined by the actions they take. If you set worthwhile goals and you develop a plan of action, you can set your plan into action any time of day or night simply by acting. It's how you act that determines, here, here's the important part. It's how you act that determines how you feel. How you feel does not determine how you act. Don't lose precious time by waiting for the right time. Become a self-starter. Guys, listen, every single entrepreneur and every single real estate entrepreneur needs to read this book. You can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. This is Sandler training. This is the top sales training that has ever existed. It's not even close. Everybody that you know that you respect that's a closer knows these techniques. Everybody that you know that and you respect that you're like, oh my gosh, they could talk to everybody and they're so confident <clears throat> has gone through this book in their training. I'm telling you, every single person, every single one. And if they didn't, the person that they like mentored under went through it and taught them all of these things. So number one, make sure after the show, not right now that you go and you get this book. It's absolutely phenomenal. Blow your face off. But I want to give you the interpretation of how to use this book in our business. All right. But of course, with everything, it starts with the mindset. So I want to go to the whiteboard real quick, and then we're going to go into the sales submarine. That's right, the sales submarine. And it's going to give you the exact process to take so that you can go out there and really, really, really get good at closing on these leads that you have and sound like a professional and sound very confident and very certain and very likable. All right? Now let's take a look at this. All right? Right here, success. Success, the, the success pyramid here breaks down into three points, right? You've got your attitude. Can everybody see this? I hope so. Your attitude, the technique or your skills and your behavior. All right. Well, this right here, this is you, right? This is what's your attitude towards yourself. If your attitude towards yourself isn't very great, you need to do some self-work or none of this is going to work. Being an entrepreneur is not going to work. All right. Like you need to make sure that your attitude toward yourself is like 10 out of 10. All right. You need to have that confidence. And if you don't have that confidence, get around people that have that confidence. It'll, it'll, it'll melt into you. Okay. Next is what's your attitude towards the market? Is this a good market? Is this a bad market? Is it harder to do deals now than it was before? Is it all these things? It's all your attitude. Everything comes down to your attitude towards the market. All right. The company, what's your attitude towards your company, towards what you actually have to offer? Absolutely critical. Over here is your goal. Your behavior is based on your goals, your plans, or your model. That's the whole point of this, this channel is to give you the model to follow so that you're not just out there just kind of uh, you know drifting out in the ocean trying to pull this all together. There's li literal steps that we're giving you so that you can succeed a lot faster. What plans, what models are you following? And what actions are you taking? We all know this. We all know this. We don't know. I need to have a great attitude. Absolutely. I need to make sure that I've got goals and I've got a plan to go after those goals and I need to take action. Everybody says the same thing. Great. So we got all that covered. Everybody's good there. Fantastic. Now let's get down to the nitty gritty. Now let's get down to the skills that you need. Now let's get down to the techniques to qualify, present, and close when you have somebody that's, that is going to sell their property. All right. Let's walk you through the sales submarine and how to implement this in your business. Because once you do, whoo, all of a sudden, 
you start going on those appointments and you're walking in and you've got that rhino skin and you've got that light in your eyes and you got that electricity and you are ready to present to that property owner because you know that you can get to the point where they're going to make a decision, whether it's a yes or whether it's a no. It's not a, I'm going to think about it. It's not a, let me mold this decision over. It's a yes and it's a no. And it's based on this submarine right here. Let's check it out. Pull it up, Matt. Here we go. The first step, the way that the reason this is set up as a submarine is because submarines have doors that you can close, right? And after every part of this process, you close the door so that you can move on to the next process. This is, this is the absolute method. This is the ingredients. This is the recipe to be able to put this thing together so that you can get more contracts signed and more contracts signed at a price that is uh, stronger than you ever thought before. All right? Number one is bonding and rapport. We all know that. Bonding and rapport. What does that come down to? That comes down to mirroring and matching. People like people that are like them. 90% of bonding and rapport is your tone of voice. Because most of the time, you're not in front of people. Most of the time, you're on the phone. You're talking to people on the phone, and you're bonding and building rapport using your tone of voice. Right? You're finding something there. You're, you're, you're opening up the conversation. You're not putting a lot of pressure into what's going on. You're just using your tone, and you're really friendly. If you want to really see this at work, you got to watch the video that Luke and I did when we were calling leads live and watch at how quick we can get to rapport by just using our tone of voice. Certainty, likability, and tone of voice, mirroring and matching what's going on and not pressuring them. It's not about the pressure. We're not putting pressure up yet. That's the next step. But first, we need to build that rapport. We need to be able to, to get past that defense system of them just completely shutting down and not listening to anything that comes next. Next is we need to get permission. We need an upfront contract. We need to be able to get permission to do the next things, which is to really to qualify this person, really understand what's going on with this person. Really ask them the questions that we need to know so that we know the four pillars of pre-qualifying, the condition of the property, their timeline to sell, their motivation, and their price, right? We need to understand these things so that we can really understand number three here, the pain. But we need to get the upfront contract because when, when they agree to us, when, when they say yes, they agree to the next step. Then we have permission. Now they're they feel in charge. They feel comfortable. They don't feel like they're having somebody, you know, putting pressure on them. They're like, oh yeah, okay, great. So do you mind? I love this. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions to get caught up on what's going on with the property? Write it down. Do you mind? I want them to give me a no first. I want them to give me a no. Because a no feels like they're in control. A no is already in their reflex. You ever go so, to, to a store or your, your car shopping or whatever else and people the sales guy comes up to you and they're like, hey, can I help you? And you're like, no, 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 no. I'm just, uh, just browsing, just looking around, right? We kind of, we, we're, we're guarded. We don't want people to, to come up and, and be in our world and try to affect the decision making that we're, that we're going through. Right. But if they tell us no, then they feel like, oh, they just gave us permission to ask them questions. And guess what happens? Guess what happens if they say, no, you can't ask me questions about my property. Right. You call up somebody. Hey, wanted to see if you would consider an offer on your property. Yeah. How much will you give me? You know, I'm not sure. You know, do you mind if I ask you a few questions to get caught up to speed on what's going on with the property? Do you mind if I ask you a few questions to get caught up to speed on this property? No, no questions. Okay, great. Guess what? You don't have a lead. That's just an asshole. Get rid of them. You don't need them in your life. There's, there's, there's not, they're already, they're, they're not there. They're just kind of curious on some level, right? They're not really serious. They haven't made the decision that they want to sell. And I will tell you this, every single time, 100,000, million, billion, trillion percent of the time, a motivated property owner will allow you to ask questions because they have a pain that they need to be solved. They have an issue, okay? 
So if they don't, if they don't, if they say no, you can't ask a few questions, then okay, great. Is there a better time that we can discuss this? When's a better time to discuss this? Let's open, let's let's have some more open-ended questions. When's a better time? Never. I hate you. Go away. I was just, I didn't really want to sell. I just wanted to see what you'd give me. Great. Have a great day. Move on. Right? From there, now you have permission to ask the questions, right? And you can ease into these questions. All right, what remodeling have you done to the property? Boom, 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 boom. Okay, great. Um, what's your timeline to sell this property? Interesting. Okay, great. There you go. If you were to sell this property, where would you move to next? Or if they tell you they have tenants, if you, if, if you were to sell this property, where are your tenants going to go to next? We're just fact finding. We're trying to find out what's going on. And what naturally happens when we ask these open ended questions is they start giving us what their pain is. What is the pain that they're going through? There has to be a problem that we can solve with a cash as is offer if we're going to be offering them a cash as is offer. There has to be pain. So that's what we're trying to find. We get the upfront contract and then we're asking about what is going on here. We're really getting down to what is the motivation? What is the pain that they're going through? Right? And just, you know, if we were to buy this property, and I'm not sure that we can, but if we were to buy this property and you didn't have to invest another cent into it, you just sold it completely as is, um, what price makes sense? Now we're getting to budget, aren't we? We're starting to close down. We're starting to figure out what's going on. We're starting to see, okay, is this pain really, really, really something that they're like, oh my gosh, I know that it needs a lot of work. I know that it's beat up. I know that it's been vacant. I know I just want to get rid of this property, whatever, right? And then they start throwing out, you know, uh, offer. They, they start throwing out prices for it. Or they tell you, I don't know, Right? Then you start getting some more upfront uh, contracts, right? You start figuring out, okay, you start getting some permission. All right, do you mind if I take some time and uh, do some research? And then once I come up with a price that makes sense, can we meet? Would it make sense for us to meet at the property? Yes, no, whatever. We're just trying to pull out what is going on here. What is happening? Are they really ready to make the decision to sell this property? Right? And then you get into the decision mode. You get into, you're actually there to, to put together and make the offer presentation, to show them what's going on. And throughout this whole entire process, you're pulling away a little bit. You're not being too uh, in their face. You're asking them really great questions. What's important to you about the buyer for your house? Tell me more about that. You told me you wanted to be out of this property in 30 days. Is that right? Yes. You told me you wanted 150000 for this property. Is that right? Yes. So if I could get you out in 30 days and get you 150000 is there anything stopping us from doing business together? Right? Upfront contracts, upfront contracts, upfront contracts all the time. So that when you go on that appointment, you are literally, it is, it is like, uh, it ends up being a lay down. It ends up being a situation where they understand what to expect. I'm going to come to the house. I'm going to make sure I'm going to take some pictures. We're going to go through the paperwork. We're going to get that all done. And then I'm going to open up escrow. Does all that make sense? Yes. Okay, great. What questions do you have? What have I, what haven't I answered there? If I come out there, is there anything that you want me to answer so that you feel 100% confident that we can do business together? Right? Isn't this awesome? You just follow the process and you get all of these upfront agreements. And then what really happens is we're not really talking about uh, the people that, that have no interest and no motivation to sell. And we're not even talking about the laydowns. The laydowns are like, hey, you come over, you give me this price, you close here, and it's done. What we're talking about is that, that bulky middle section that they're on the fence on making a decision. And so we're going in there and we're really understanding what the pain is. And we're really trying to figure out, okay, you know, why don't you just list it with a real estate agent? Why don't you just fix it up yourself and sell it? Why don't you remember they're on Hell Island. They want to get to Heaven Island and there's different bridges to be able to get there. And we have to see if they're considering the other bridges as opposed to 
accepting our offer. That all happens by asking really good open-ended questions and being really confident and just making sure that you understand, are, do these people have a problem that we can solve? And then just, well, why don't you just let your, your, your daughter live in the property for free? Like, what's the worst thing that can happen? If, if your daughter lived there, if your son lived there or son-in-law lived there for another, I don't know, two or three years, what does that mean to you guys? Right? And I, I think the most, like, what really always tripped me up when I was presenting is, and I would, I would hear these, these things, is the tone of voice, the way that you ask it, the way that you present it, the way that you, you need to have curiosity. You need to have it. I said that fancy sure <laughs> curiosity. Good enunciation. Yes, thank you. I have been uh, taking enunciation classes. No, but you need to have that curiosity. You need to have the kindness, the confidence, and the curiosity, and you wrap that all up into this uh, submarine. And then from there, you have the fulfillment. And the fulfillment is doing what you say. I'm going to, and you got to set expectations the whole way through. Every single time that you're doing lead follow-up, you need to set something up. I'm going to call you back. I'm going to do my research. And is it okay with you if I call you back tomorrow at 12 o'clock? Does that, are you available? No. Okay. One o'clock, two o'clock. What time are you available? Right? Set the appointment. I'm going to put it in my calendar. Can you please put it in your calendar? Um, and we'll have a great conversation tomorrow and I'll be able to, to let you know, um, what our thoughts are on the property and what we can offer you. Always have something set up for the next time. Always. Okay, great. Well, let me do some research and I'll uh, call you back. I hear that so much. I hear that all the time. Set the appointment, the more upfront and listen, can they blow you off? Sure. Absolutely. They could blow you off. But they'll blow you off a lot less if it's set up, if you get that agreement, if you get that permission, right? People go, well, I don't know if I'm bugging them with lead follow-up. Get permission. Just to let you know how we how I work is I over-communicate, all right? So you need to, t I, 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 I want to give you permission to shut me down if I'm reaching out too much, if I'm bugging you too much. Is that okay? Okay, great. If we can't do business, I'm going to let you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll try to give you some other options for what you can do. Uh, but if you if you know you don't want to work with me, can you at least do the same for me? Will you at least tell me that, no, you don't want to sell the property. You don't want to do business with me. You want to do something else. That way, we're just not wasting time. Be confident out there. Pull away. I am probably not going to be your best offer. But I, I, I'm just curious, what is important to you about the person, that, about the buyer that buys your property? Woo! Are people getting this? Oh, yeah. Are we getting comments? Like the best one. Are we going bananas, guys? Are we going bananas in the comments? Am I giving you some, some things that you can implement into your business? If so, hit that like button. I think everyone hit that like. If you're not subscribed... If you're not subscribed, make sure that you subscribe if you're getting value out of this. But guys, this is the process. I mean, this is not, it, it's all right here in this, in here. It's just the way that you interpret it into your business. And so use these, use these techniques, use these questions that, that I'm, guys, this isn't theory. These are questions that I've, that I've used. These are questions that are currently being used. If you're part of, part of the Rhino tribe in the coaching, you know Chad, my acquisition manager, is live calling two hours a day, Monday through Thursday. So you people are watching him do this. He's using these techniques all the time, and they're working. And then the other people in the Rhino Tribe do it on these calls, and it's working. It works. You got to get the permission. And if they're not going to give you permission to ask questions about what's going on with the property, they don't want to sell the property to you. They don't even want to talk to you. You're interrupting their day. Move on. I would rather you have a fast no because it leads to faster yeses. It does. What kills you in this business is maybes. What kills you in this business is I want to think about it. So don't give them an option. Just tell them how you do business. Get, get, get the permission for them to, to, 
to do the business the way that that you're going to lay it out for them. This is what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and do the research. I'm going to find what we think uh, the property needs, what it'll sell for, all of those things. And we're going to present an offer just to let you know how we work. We buy properties completely cash as is. You don't have to put another cent into them. We actually pay all the title and closing costs and there's no real estate commission. So I just want you to know that when you get an offer from us, it is a net offer. Are you familiar with what a net offer is? No. Yes. Okay, great. Boom, 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 boom. And then you move forward. Close each one of the submarine doors and you're going to close more opportunities. And I'm telling you, as you build this business out, and I know you want this to be an actual business that's a servant to you and not you a servant to it always, not have like a glorified job or be self-employed. You bring on people that you train in this method to be actual closers, you will double your income with the same amount of efforts. Double your income. So understand the sales process here and you will be so much more powerful. Got it? Welcome, guys. Welcome to the Wholesaling Inc. live show where we know that finding discounted property is the most proven path to financial freedom. I am your host, Brent Daniels. I am joined by the incredible Mike Mahoney, the amazing Alejandra Merch. And uh, we're here for four reasons, right? One, to give you instruction, not, not education, not theory, not entertainment, some entertainment, but mostly instruction so that you can go and implement into your business. Number two, we want to answer all the questions that you have and challenges that you're going through as you're building your business. Number three is we want you to squad up in the comments section so that you can find people that are doing this business. It's going to pull you ahead faster when you are around people that are a few steps ahead of you and to squad up and to find people that are like-minded because there's not a lot of us out there. We're the unicorns out there in the world. We truly are. Or uh, what do they call rhinos? Fat unicorns? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Uh, I like that. And then the fourth is obviously to celebrate your success. We've got the victory bell. Mike, can you give me the victory bell? I don't know yeah, what it's doing way over there. Uh, we got the victory bell. I don't care if you've talked to your first property owner or you just closed a deal that netted you $100,000. We want to recognize you and celebrate you and ring this victory bell and bring some energy into this industry. So with that, we got 38 minutes to crack this thing open and answer questions and celebrate. All right, Vincent, questions for later. How are you making sure which numbers you have on the dialer are not spam? How do you stay on top of your numbers and keep them fresh? I have ready mode. I don't know how ready mode uh, does it. Vincent, we use Mojo and Mojo white labels the phone numbers so that they're they're um, really, really, really clean. And we um, we change it out every hundred calls. We'll rotate the number. So one, I mean, it's very obvious if you have a bad number because you're not talking to anybody. Mm -hmm. Your contact rate is not up, right? So you want to make sure you're between 7 and 10% on your contact rate. You go through the list twice, no more than twice. Um, and then, and then you know, go on to another list. And that should get you a lot of contacts and a lot of opportunities. And if you use these uh, techniques to close on those, um, you're going to get a lot of really great deals. I would add to that. You know, if ready mode doesn't white label like Mojo, mm -hmm. just to Google, Google. the numbers yeah. and see if it's coming up, you know, yep. spam. Yep. We have a two-parter. Oh, two-parter. Whoa. All right. Joseph, welcome, you, you fancy dapper gentleman. Look at you. Uh, seller wants to sell. We have price. Can't get him to take the next step. Yeah. Trying to set up a meet for showing, and he hasn't provided enough photos. Any ideas? to get him to the next step. What is the pain? House is vacant. He's in one city and the house is in another. He said, if you want, you need, you need 270 K. We said, okay, now he's gone radio silent, right? You got to dig back into the pain. Uh, I, I hate this saying, but it, I, I don't know a more succinct way to explain it. You got to hurt him and then heal him. You got to see what is going on here because they're not they're not going to tell you up front all of these emotions and pain and stresses that they're going through typically in these situations. So you need to go. And what I would do is I would start pulling back. 
So Ryan does an excellent job. Ryan, Ryan, uh, my acquisition manager, who's on this show, uh, we got to get him back yeah, on. I was like, we need yeah, to um, he he does a great job. Hey, listen, it looks like you're not serious about selling the property. Um, can you just let me know? I don't want to keep bugging you about it, but it looks like you're just not ready to make that decision yet, right? And then just start pulling away and pulling away and pulling away. The more that you're chasing them and they're radio silent. Uh, the more likely that they're either going to be leveraging your offer or they're not going to take you seriously. Yeah. Are you nice about it or are you a dick? Yeah, you're always nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, hey, you know, I mean, this, if you don't call me back, I'm never going to, you know, or, you know. Yeah. No, you know, I, I mean, you, you just want to make sure you, you always want the kindness. You always want to yeah. be kind. Now you can be firm and kind at the same time. You know what I mean? Um, but just don't go and, um, and be f nipping at their heels. Hey, what's going on? What's happening? I mean, be in front of them, but just like lay it out. Looks like you're not interested in selling this property anymore. Can you please let me know either way so that I don't keep bugging you? Don't that, keep that's bugging. what I do. Yeah. Yeah. Put it. Yeah. Nice. LA Mars. If I'm driving for dollars and I come across a block of distressed houses, but don't see one renovated home around, does it make harder to do the deal? Yes. Until somebody starts remodeling that neighborhood. So one LA Mars is um, great opportunities. Listen, every property sells at the right price. You need to talk to buyers in that area and you need to say, hey, listen, what do you, what do you sell? What are you buying these properties for? Right? What do you, what are you buying? What do you, what do you, um, what, what price makes sense in this area? Are you even going in this area? Get, get the advice from buyers in there. Look for any properties that were bought within that zip code in the last uh, three months. I mean, you could find them super easy on batch leads, on privy, on, on prop stream. Um, and, and just find out, right. You can get, get that at rhino lists.com. So, uh, talk to your buyers, but listen, everybody, every property sells at the right price. Every property. Another two Unless it's haunted. Another two partner. Ooh. Javon, uh, pulling pre foreclosure on batch. I see the date of filings and begin to feel like it's been too long to reach out. Sure. Should I be trusting the batch leads give? Gives and just call or look at the dates. I don't care about dates, Javon, because I know also to my question, should I be worried about list pendants versus notice of sale? Stuff like that. No. Listen, it's a sign of distress. Here's the fact. 90% of people that are in pre-foreclosure do a loan modification. And then I think it's like 30%. Don't quote me on it. I'll, I'll, I'll figure I'll, I'll find that out. But I think a third at least go back into pre-foreclosure because what here's what happens. I can't make my payment because uh, I lost a job. Uh, I, 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 I'm terrible with money. I've got too many debts, whatever. The bank goes, okay, what can you pay a month? I say, F uh, my payment's 1600. I could pay 500 bucks a month. And they go, okay, you have a job? Yeah, I have a part-time job. I can afford that. And they go, okay, great. Well, your payment's 1600. We're gonna put 1100 a month on the back of your loan so your principal balance increases the amount that you actually owe to them. So if you have a $100,000 loan after month one, you owe 101,100, 102,200, blah, 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 every month just adds to the loan, but we'll let you, we'll, we'll, we'll help you out with the payment, right? And then what happens is people fall into bad, um, financial times again, or decisions again. Now they can't make the $500 payment. The bank goes, well, we already gave you a great deal on getting this done. We're just going to, uh, we're forced to, you know, start this process over. So, but if they showed signs that they were in pre foreclosure, why not call them all the time? I mean, it doesn't matter. I used to say, you know, as long as you're not within, you know, two weeks of it going to sale, you'll be fine. It really doesn't matter because most of them don't go to sale right now. The banks have done a really good job with government pressure to not foreclose on properties. They'll play ball with you. They'll play ball with the property owners, which gives them, you know, uh, a, a breathing room. But oftentimes they fall into the same 
patterns and the issues pop up again and there's still great lists to go after. So I would not care. Call them up. Don't tell them, oh, I saw your house was in pre-foreclosure. I saw that you're having problems making your payments. I mean, if you want to cause friction and get them to clam up and not open up to you as fast as possible, say some stuff like that. But just tell them you're interested in buying a property in the neighborhood and you were calling around and wanted to see when they, they planned on selling that property. Would you consider an offer on your property there? Great. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions about the property to get a, caught up to speed? Great. Boom, 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 boom. And now we're in the sales cycle. We're rocking. We got a real lead. Mora. Uh, Mora Home Solutions asks, I've been <laughs> doing curls daily at my desk while cold calling to get Brent's by. I love it. Get it. It's, you know, listen, you got to, it just start. It's just reps. You know what I mean? It's just, you know, you can't teach a kid to ride a bike at a seminar. It's all about practice, Mora. Good. That's it. I mean, I I'll tell you what. I mean, I get so many deals because of these arms. It's incredible. I mean, it is the number one factor. It is so crazy. Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah, they're not, not going to do the deal. <laughs> what are they going to say? They're going to say no to this, huh? Then I throw out the, I'll arm wrestle you for the property. Be afraid to get in a fist fight. <laughs> That's so stupid. Abraham, when targeting on market properties, what price would you lock them up at? 50% of what they're listed at. Or lower. I mean, listen, Abraham, here's the deal. If you're going after on market properties, um, one, you can try to get them as soon as they come out. Uh, but there's there's probably going to be multiple offers on it. Uh, and if you wait a long time, you have to catch them at the right time. They've had multiple offers. In every market, the uh, investors are putting lo lower offers than what they're listed for all the time. And the seller is saying no. So you got a couple ways. You can, one, try to catch them at the right time when they're ready to make a decision, which happened to me. Um, we, we have a whole document... Uh, um, Documentary? No. What, what? Documentary. Documentary. Holy cow. Documents. Doc, uh, documentary on uh, a call that I had. Um, so Daniel, who's right down here, um, <laughs> brought his phone in, had a property. We called him. They didn't want to sell that property. I asked if they had a different property to sell. Found that property. <laughs> that property is listed at three forty-five. We got it for two fifty-two. Just fixed it up. It's currently pending for two eighty. The appraisal came in low because the appraiser really, really screwed it up. But it's a VA loan. That's a whole different thing. Those stay on the property for a long time. And so we're at 263 on it. Uh, we put um, 50K into it. So we bought it for 252, put 50K into it. Let's call it 10K in closing costs. Let's call it 20K in closing costs. And so we'll net somewhere around 42,000 from one call but it was on a different deal. So if they don't want to sell that deal, ask them if they have anything else. All right. Diego, look at that avatar. That looks powerful. Is it normal for a cash buyer to ask for 30 days close time frame? Um, it just depends on the deal. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the buyer says. It matters what's on the contract. You're assigning them the contract. So if you put the closing date is going to be April 15th, which it can't be. That's a Saturday. So it'd be uh, April 17th because April 15th and 16th, we've got the growth summit. This is the last week. Yeah. Woo! It's going to be absolutely bananas. Everybody is coming into town for this one. Uh, guys, if you're interested in getting the last, uh, I don't even know, 10, 15 tickets, something like that, a growth summit, 2023.com. Um, you need to be there. We are going to be giving you so many skills and so many plays that work. And so man, you're going to be surrounded by the best of the best. You got Henry Washington. He's going to break down everything that he's doing with building up uh, what he has, 62 rental properties. 90, yeah. it's more than that. 90 properties. 98 or something. Uh, you've great. got Jamil talking about how to get all of these deals um, from w without marketing. Uh, you've got uh, Pace, Pace talking creative finance deals and what's working right now. You've got Todd Toback, who has taught everybody uh, how to be masters at closing deals and uh, the sales process. You got Tom Kroll, that's the, the, the best of the best. He's my mentor. And he's, uh, if you don't know Tom Kroll, um, your world is instantly better 
as soon as you are around him and understand what he has to say. Uh, and then you got myself and, and, and the whole Rhino tribe. It's going to be absolutely incredible. Make sure that you get there. It is April 15th and 16th. Uh, we're excited to see you there and meet you in person. All right. Don't just be passive. Have batteries included in your business. And uh, it starts with getting around people that are taking massive action. Linda asks, having issues with locating numbers for LLC buyers, please advise. Yeah, you got to go into open corporates, grab the LLC, go to open corporates and find out who the managing member is. And then find out what the mailing address is for them. And then put that in to batch leads or you can put it into true people search and uh, find you know different numbers to call and see who's the right number. That's how you do it, Linda. Boom. We're cooking today. Abraham, would you target expired listings? I have called more expired listings than anybody that you know. <laughs> I'm serious. Uh, I mean, I did it for, yeah, I did that for eight years. How about, how about no? And um, listen, here's the thing. There, there is techniques. It, it depends on if you're looking to get a cash, if you're looking to do wholesale deals or if you're looking to do um, creative finance. I think that there is a creative ah, finance play there. Yep. I think that there are people that don't have equity. They try to put their home in the market. They got caught and they don't know what to do. Yep. And, and you could take over their loan. And Pace Morby has incredible content and all that. Uh, he breaks it all down. So I would, I would highly advise you to check that out. And I would, I would wholesale those sub two deals if you don't want to keep the property, if it's not in a smoking hot school district. All right. Um, so sure. Absolutely. I mean, listen, they, you know, that they wanted to sell now in my experience, not a tremendous amount of them turn into, to great cash offer deals, but test it, like go for it. You know what I mean? Just understand. And, and I would, I would let it breathe a little bit. I probably wouldn't call them as soon as they expire because as soon as a property expires, they're going to get 70 to a hundred calls from real estate agents trying to get that listing oh, oh. minimum. So go for it. If you want to do creative financing. I mean, I think go for it either way. I mean, if it's a totally ugly house, you know, that's one thing, or you're just pulling a list and you're talking to them, but yeah, I mean, I think from a creative finance standpoint, it, it, it's a good strategy. As long as you know how to pitch that. So now be around somebody that knows what how to What other list it. would you go after before that? Um, I mean, listen, I like ugly houses and big checks. It's the motto of our company. Mm -hmm. So I like driving for dollars. Know. I like properties that uh, are that have uh, tired landlords. But Brent, everybody's calling those names. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. I can't believe we, we get these deals. I mean, listen, it's a timing thing and it's a skills thing. Yeah. Well, it's tough when I, isn't there a list that nobody's called? Maybe go find it. I don't know. Not that we experience, but we have the skills and the confidence to go out there and get these deals. I think even a lot of it, you, you hit it first. It's like, especially with, if you're new and if you haven't really developed all your skills, it's really timing, mm -hmm. right place, right time. They're ready to talk. They like you well enough. You're having a quality conversation. You That's know, it. you come with a, the, you know, a, a service heart. I mean, it's. Yeah. What are those four pillars, Brent? Four pillars. Matt, you have it locked and loaded in there, bud? I'll give you the four pillars so that you have it. Boom. He's got it on right there. Property condition, their timeline, their motivation, and their price. That's what you really want to understand, right? Property condition, timeline, motivation, price. Um, and f figuring out the timeline is absolutely critical right? Understanding, have they made the decision that they're going to sign the appropriate paperwork to transfer title to somebody else? But remember what really happens, what shortens the timeline on these deals is the motivation. What is their problem? Why are they talking to you? I mean, this is way easier when, it, when you have marketing or referrals coming in, right? But marketing is expensive. I mean, marketing costs a lot to get people to call you that are motivated to sell their property. And it's not as predictable as being proactive. <clears throat> you can figure out how many people you need to talk to on a daily, weekly, monthly basis to do to meet your financial goals. And so you're in control of your schedule, one, and 
you're con- you're in control of how much money you make. It's when you lose focus and you try to do everything um, and that, that, that takes people off track. I am telling you, you talk to enough people that own ugly properties or in ugly situations. You, you, you can't not win. You can't not build a fortune. It's just people get smart. That's why the dumbest people win. Not unintelligent. They're just, this is what works. I'm going to keep doing this. It's when we start getting creative. Oh, I watched this YouTube video and this dude was like, oh, I send out this text through this technique and it like got me 700 deals. It's not a lot of deals. It's not real. It's not real. And even if it is real, everybody jumps on that and then it becomes not real anymore. Build a business, build off of sound principles, talking to people. If you can talk to people and it's a lot easier to do, do that. But from my experience, every single successful entrepreneur was in the dirt, was in putting unbelievable effort into building their business, talking to so many people, breaking through all their insecurities, breaking through all of their fears, breaking through all of the rejections, breaking through all of that and coming out the other side powerful. The people I see take off like a rocket, make a million dollars a year and then give it all back and, and, and not be in the business anymore and go back to a job or go back, you know, try to find something else to do or try to build a brand so that they can just sell you on ideas and theories. It happens all the time. You build a real business off of principles, you win and it's long lasting. You don't get into the Hall of Fame by having one good year. You don't. And I intend on building businesses that are going to be long lasting. Because what else are we going to do? Change tracks all the time? Build up a business to sell it? Maybe. But at this point, it's not going to be my wholesaling business. That's just the cash machine that buys me all the other assets. Uh, Vincent, can you talk more about the simplicity of this business? Yes. It's three letters. Talk to people. <laughs> Quality conversations with property owners. Distressed. Quality conversations with distressed property owners. To, to, to really put an exclamation point on it. If you want to get the best deals. If you want to be a real estate agent, go be a real estate agent. That's a whole different thing. You want to just buy and hold and build a rental portfolio. That's a whole other thing. Easy. Go, go, go do that. You know what I mean? If you want to build up a business that's going to give you massive passive cash flow that's exciting and you get to cherry pick the absolute best deals that you keep and or flip or develop, then learn how to talk to people. Learn how to build a culture of proactivity. Your Yourself and your business should be on the phone all day long. This thing is our connection to everything, everything. The money maker. It is. I mean, it's our portal to as much as, as much income as you want to make. By the way, having been a realtor and own rentals, mm-hmm. being a wholesaler is way better. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. I mean, even Airbnbs. I was doing Airbnbs, and uh, Aaron, my wife Aaron, um, was the one managing it. And she could never like just turn it off because as soon as we'd be relaxing, we'd be at the cabin on the weekends or during the summers. Or we would be uh, running around at school events or at sports events or whatever. And all of a sudden you get a notification. Do you have a 12 by 24 uh, inch cooking sheet? I'm trying to make <laughs> cookies. Your, your, your mat, your front door mat, I think needs to be replaced. These are things that are real <laughs> all the time. <laughs> all the time. It was always something and you had to respond or you get a bad grade and then you don't get things going on with Airbnbs. We had, we had incredible tenants. We, we moved out of our house. It was our first little house. It was 1300 square feet. We bought it together. It was wonderful. We had a lot of pride of ownership. It was cute. We're going to keep it forever. 
right? And we had this uh, this cute couple move into it, and they did a great job, and they paid rent on time, and it was really great. And then they were like, "We're we're gonna move after a year and a half," and we're like, "Cool." The next two tenants that we had were absolute nightmares. We vetted them out. One of them came in and didn't pay after six months, and then I got a I got a filing that he was filing bankruptcy and and everything else. And then the other one, you know, wanted to hang all this crazy stuff and was putting holes in the wall, and doing all sor- sorts of different things. And it's like, oh my gosh, this is I get it. Like owning real estate's great, and having a property manager. We had a property manager. Guess what? You have to manage your property manager. Guess what? Property managers lose their mind every twenty four months and disappear. <laughs> And there's a reason why over half of your deals are 85% of the deals are tired landlords. Yeah. yeah. I think some people are cut out for it, but not most. I mean, it, it's craziness. I think it's great. And I think if you build a business around it, it's fantastic. I think I can make, and I know I can make, and I have made a lot more money building a wholesaling business yeah. that gives me between 40 and $60,000 a month. When, and, and my team runs it all. Less headaches. Runs it all. Uh, prop wire, uh, Ariel G asked property wire or prop stream. I have not used property wire. I would love to get some reviews of people that have used both, um, and find out because Jerry's making a hard, hard push, uh, for prop wire. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a great strategy. Get as many people on there as possible. Uh, make it really valuable, upgrade them into some sort of, you know, elite membership type thing for extra goodies and trainings and all this other stuff, and then sell it for 50 million bucks to somebody that wants to buy it. Wait, who's is that? Jerry's? It's Jerry's. Yeah. Got it. And so I think it's a great strategy. I think it's a classic strategy of like a, a, a Facebook or a bigger pockets or anything where you get in, you get all the information for free, you get access. Um, but then there's certain, you know, uh, ways to make income in there. And so I think it's cool. I think it's awesome. And he's got, you know, Jerry's wildly successful, so he can throw a bunch of money at this experiment. It's just doesn't have as, as, as good a data as somebody that's getting paid more uh, from a subscription basis. That's, that's the test. So we'll see. I'd love to find out. Also, people in the comments um, are saying prop streams down, and it, I think it is actually down. It hasn't worked all morning. Prop streams, yeah, maybe they're uh, maybe having they're an, update. an update or something. Yeah. There's a lot of people commenting about that. Steve, my biggest frustration with wholesalers is they really have no idea of what the actual (laughs) rehab costs will be. Yeah. Steve, I assume uh, their ARVs are always way too optimistic. There's no uh, margin for us to make a profit, yet they will sell to newbies who end up losing money. How can this be resolved? Well, you've got, I mean, you've got two parties involved there, Steve. One, you've got uh, investors that don't know how to buy good deals. Or they just have different strategies. You know, I've seen, you know, you t- people that can you put up that, uh, Matt, can you put up the cash buyer um, chart, the, the rankings of who spends more on deals? Um, that'd be really helpful um, just so that everybody knows. Because different strategies, Steve, cost for different things. Here you go. So different buyers buy, right? If it's a creative financing deal, you could go over 100%. Uh, hedge funds are kind of wiped out, um, but the, they always kind of get in and out. Uh, owner occupied, you never know if you sell it to them, are they going to occupy it? A lot of people will pay more for that if they're in uh, good areas that they want to be or around family or something there. Um, value adds, that's people that add square footage to properties that are smaller and they can they can you know put in $150, $200 a square foot in, in renovations and get $300, $400 out in you know, higher price priced areas, uh, Airbnb, are they in, uh, putting it into their rental portfolio? Are they doing burr or are they just fixing flippers and wholesalers? But, um, yeah, listen, there's a lot of bad deals out there. A lot of people don't understand how to run comps. And so we're trying to remedy that, Steve, we're trying to teach people how to run the right comps. And we, we have a ton of education out there and instruction out there to be able to help people understand, is this a deal or no deal? But the fact is when you're getting started, there's going to be there's going to be some rough times. You're going to you're going to value properties at the wrong price and it's going to throw everything off and people are are not going to be happy. Um, but Steve, what I would tell you is hook in to, you know, trusted wholesalers that um, really know what they're doing. And as long as you, you know, go with people that you trust, you're going to find some amazing deals and or 
market yourself. Yeah. We sometimes get beat out on deals because the actual fix and flip or the actual investor, the actual person that wants to add to their rental portfolio can offer more and it's genuine. And so it's rare because most fix and flippers and, and people that are going to put in the work just don't uh, have a marketing engine. They're either trying to get deals off the MLS from realtors or from wholesalers. And so I would encourage everybody, if you really want to make a mint, that's the way to do it. If you have the experience and the contractors in the process and you know design and you don't get, you know, too turned, you know, turned around and distracted by, um, you know, the full process, then um, of, of, of rehabbing a property, then I would, I would tell you market, you know, or build a great reputation with the best wholesalers in town that know what kind of deals you're looking for. But I agree with you. Yeah, it's nonsense. I see these all day. I get, I, you know, I'm on everybody's email list. It's like, are you out of your mind? Am I the only one that puts out good deals? You know what I mean? Our deals sell super fast because there's, they're legit deals. Oh. But when we get beat out by 40 grand and then I see it on, you know, somebody else's website for another 20 grand, 60 grand on top of what we would offer and we would make 30 on it. I'm like, that's 30 grand too high. Yeah. Who the hell is going to buy this? And for a long time people did, but now the buyers have the power again, Steve. So you're in for a good run. Ralph, Alejandra rocks. Boom. Salvadorian uh, flag Brent. princess. <laughs> Nice. Okay. Uh, just did a call today and seller wasn't selling. Asked about any other properties and he said his aunt has a property she needs to sell. Going to lock it up today. Is this the first bell ring? What yeah. is going on today? I know, Am I, I talking know. too much? Maybe. Here we go. Lock that deal up. Always ask the seller if they have other properties they're looking to sell. Absolutely. Yep. Would you consider an offer on your property there? No. Okay, totally understand. Do you have any other properties that you would consider an offer on? Maybe even a piece of land. We had a we had a student that uh, that did a, a six figure deal by asking that question mm -hmm. on a land deal. Absolutely bananas. Um, so make sure that you add that little part. Do you have uh, any other properties, even a piece of land? Bruce, I got a su succession, four people on it. I have three signatures. The one that won't sign lives in the distressed home. No water or electric. Hasn't paid taxes in five years. He won't even talk to me. Any ideas? Yeah, you got to put the pressure on the family to talk to him. Not even put pressure on him. You got to tell him, like, listen, what do you guys want to do with this property? The, the It's only going to get worse. You guys are only going to get less and less and less the longer that this person stays in there. Can you help this person out? And then if not, then you can, you can see if you could talk to an attorney, but if he's on title, I mean, he's on title, <laughs> you know, if he inherited the property and he doesn't want to sell, um, you know, it's going to be a way to, it's, it's going to be a process. Remember, here's the thing we're deal finders, not deal creators. You can't create him to sell the deal if it sell or sign, if he doesn't want to sign, okay. can you sweeten the pot? Can you give him an extra couple grand maybe? Yeah, okay. Can you help them? Can you can you go and have a conversation with them? Or are they just going to totally shut you out and just not do anything with it? And by the way, if they haven't paid taxes, they'll lose the house. They will get nothing. He will get nothing. He will drag them all into getting nothing because people buy tax liens and then will foreclose on that property. They won't talk to them. They're scared of him. Yeah, I bet. So then you talk to him. Go to the house. You know, I mean, it's got no water to the property. Yeah. That's, awesome. that's wild. Sounds scary. Tyler, what SMS is working best for you guys right now, Brent? Uh, that would be rhinotexting.com. That is um, launch control. Fantastic. Yeah, it's, it's working really well. Yeah, we've already made as much as we did this year in the first quarter than we did last year. Last year was rough. Last year was real rough. This year's good. But we were using batch leads. Batch yeah. leads was filtering out their or phasing out their their texting and uh, focusing on on their core business. And so the deliverability mm -hmm. rate was super low and um, the carriers started blocking a lot. So um, but I will tell you, if you have launch control, you have to have a website. 
which which um, can be easy to do. Just you know, get a website that costs you ten or twenty bucks a month. Relentless. Hey, Brett. When a motivated seller agrees on price and signs purchase and sale agreement, what's a good way to explain the next steps in the process? I love it. Yes. All right. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scan in the purchase agreement while we sit here and I'm going to send this. I'm going to open up title. Okay. I'm going to open up the title so that they can start work. The title company is going to reach out. They're going to need to get all your information so that they know what needs to be paid off. They're going to take care of everything. So when the title company calls, I need you to really communicate with them. That's going to make things go a lot smoother. They're going to send you out a packet of information to fill out. And that's really the bulk of what's going to happen from, from a, 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 a paperwork standpoint. And so once they get that, they can, they can make sure that everything gets paid off. And then um, what's going to happen is in a couple of days, I'm going to bring, it's going to be a circus through this property. I'm going to bring in everybody as much as possible. And we're going to be going through the property just to make sure we know everything that's going on, just to make sure we know what the budget is for this property, make sure that the money's in line and everything gets done. All right. So it's going to be, it's going to be wild. So when's a good two hour window? Can I get, you sign it on Monday. Uh, can I get Thursday uh, between like two and four or 10 and noon or whatever else? And I'm going to bring everybody through and then we'll be out of your hair. Fair enough. Okay, great. And then what's going to happen is the title company is going to call you. Uh, they're going to either send somebody with all of the final closing paperwork here. If you want to just do it um, with a mobile notary, or you can go into their office, which do, do you have a preference either way? Okay, great. Well, I'll let them know and they'll coordinate all that with you. Uh, everything. Once everything is signed, um, then you get your money. And uh, that'll be on the 30th or whatever date you have. I recently started working on acquisitions and I'm having a slow start. Besides driving for dollars, investor lift, the MLS, Craigslist. What other avenues have brought you success? Thank you. I mean, if you're just getting started and you're already wondering what else, you haven't done those. Do those. Do, do, do all these. I mean, you, you can pull lists from uh, Rhino lists um, with batch. You can go after the tired landlords. You can go after probates. You can go after uh, tax defaults. You can go after lean properties. You can go after tired landlords. You can go after land. Like, just don't get stuck in this. Well, what else can I do? Find something and go deep and go bananas and go and go and go and go and go and go. Alex. Hey, Brent. Is there a current formula you guys are using for a quick buy price? 80% less repairs, less assignment fee? Yeah, we'll pull this up for you. You want to pull that up, Matt? Yeah, I mean, this is the quick formula. If this estimate is 250 or more, 50%. If it's 250 and between 250 and 135%. If it's under 100,000, 10%. This is for ugly properties, guys. Now, you really want to take it to the next level. Go back to the, listen, we, we have broken this down a ton, okay? But you need to understand supply and demand. If there's more than two months of inventory, 70% of the fixed up value minus the repair costs equals what a buyer will buy it for. You subtract your fee of what you want to make from that, and that's your max allowable offer. Now, if there's less than two months inventory, and I don't care if it's just that subdivision, that area, that zip code, the more, the, the closer in that you can get, the better it's going to be for you. Um, but if it's less than two months, it's 80% minus repairs. And then if there's less than one month and watch, watch the inventory squeeze up over the next six months, people are still locked into their properties because they don't want to give up their interest rate. So you have a lot of people that would move up or move down if interest rates were still low, but they're locked into two, three, 4%. Now it's 7%. And so people are like, wait, I could go and buy a bigger house or I could go and buy a more expensive house that's less that, that, that I get less than what I currently already have. I'm going to wait until, you know, something happens in either life or in, in, in the, uh, in the market. And so people are staying. So you're seeing 
the properties that are selling are the most um, up, updated, upgraded, typically flip properties, and they sell really fast. All right, let's end on the high notes. We're going to end on a high note. I love that. High notes. High notes. Brent, we locked up a free foreclosure property with the deceased owner on Friday with the heirs that we found on Facebook for two. 28600 sold it Monday for 310 Whoa. Dave Murphy in the house. Come on! <laughs> Holy jamoly. That is what we like to call a massive deal. Yeah. Boom. Daniel, Flipper hit me up asking for a deal. I had nothing because busy with addition on house. Went on the MLS, got him a deal under contract and assigned in 24 hours, making $16,787. I love mm. this unlimited ATM. Mm. Yeah. It's called a wholesaling business. Mm -hmm. It's called wholesaling real estate. Daniel, <laughs> we celebrate you. You are such a badass. Here we go. Come on. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for participating, guys. If you are just jumping on, make sure you watch the first 20 minutes of this show because we went absolutely bananas on closing more, closing techniques, questions asked, and the process. Make sure that you guys check out uh, and get the book, You Can't Teach a Kid to Ride a Bike at a Seminar. I think it's going to really blow your face off and really be powerful. And let's bring in the team. Everybody, come on. Matt, come on. Uh, it's a team effort here every Wednesday for the Wholesaling Inc. live show. Alejandra with her prints fit. We've got Daniel. We've got Mike. We've got Matt. We all love you. We all support you. Remember, keep your house clean. Protect your health. Increase your value to the world. You'll live an incredible life. Love you guys. See ya.